Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the StarCraft II World Championship Series. We are live from Montreal, Canada, kicking off the first day of our festivities, the group stage, as we get towards the end of the WCS circuit for the year. I'm Nathanius, joined on the desk by Fear Dragon and Zombie Grub. We just had a nice little 2-0 victory from Snoot over Harston to start things. How, how are both of you feeling? How are you feeling, Zombie Grub, coming into WCS again? I feel great. It's been seven months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. Uh, if you're not counting Challenger, I suppose, right? But <laughs> no, I'm very excited. Uh, you know, Super's Harsom wasn't the ace match long, long games that I was hoping for, but the result was what I was exactly open, hoping for because I like both the guys, right? But it's what I expected. So there's just a ton of very good players. We're in a group stage two and some really hard groups as well. And Fair Dragon, we can just cut to the chase. Which NA player is going to surprise everybody here at this tournament? Ooh, okay. So I'm just going to say Group Stage 2, I've already looked at the groups, and the two players I'm just expecting to make it out are Johnstone Semper. And this is really cool, especially because this is Semper's last event. He is a law student. He's super focused on school after this. This is his last chance to actually do anything in the StarCraft scene. Does he drop out of law school if he wins and qualifies for BlizzCon? I mean, that would be the legal thing to do. Okay. Okay, good questions to be answered here. We do have our next match that we're going to start talking about. We've got Showtime going up against Nurchio. Uh, both of the boys on the desk the last time we were talking about this. Showtime, a player that has uh, been picking up a little bit of that heat. He's been playing a lot in Korea. He's been getting mm -hmm. some hype coming up to him, and he needs to perform extremely well if he wants to make it out here. Yes, uh, he has the potential for sure, but it is kind of weird because he's been in Korea. Yes, he had the opportunity to match up against very good Koreans and prove that he can defeat them, at least online. But then because he was in Korea, he didn't even make it through the Challenger qualifiers for Montreal. Mm -hmm. So, and he has had, I believe, one uh, pretty poor WCS performance and then hasn't exactly done as he wanted for the other two. So Montreal, it can be his time, but it is a question mark if it is. And Nurture is like the opposite, right? Because Nurture yes. has been that ultra consistent, possibly one of the most consistent players in the entire WCS circuit. Yep. Consistently always going to those playoffs and getting to the round of eight in almost yep. every single WCS circuit. Yep. Yeah. And Nurture, a player that is looking to maintain, he's uh, he's in an okay spot. I mean, at this point, you really just don't want to flub out at the early stage of the tournament. Yeah. You're hoping to make it, if he keeps that consistency up, get to the round of eight, make his way to the global finals. Mm -hmm. He's been playing pretty well. And I think a player that maybe we don't talk about as much because in the European Zerg scene, Cyril has stolen the spotlight from everybody. I feel like Nurchio's kind of hitting that point that Snoot hit where we were like, Nurchio's really good. And we just talked about how Nurchio's really good for five, six, seven months, a year, two years. And finally, we're just kind of at that point where we're like, yeah, Nurchio's, everyone already knows Nurchio's really good. So we don't really talk about him or even think about him that much, but he's always there. Yeah. Kind of like in a, in a weird Snoot-ish way where they both perform well and consistently, mm -hmm. but yep. they haven't been taking the like, big championships. Oh, man, he's slumping. He only got to the quarterfinals instead of the semifinals this time. It's like, okay. Yeah, and lots of players struggle to make it that far. So talk about this match for me then. Who do you like? Why do you like them? Who do you, who do you think's got this Fear Dragon? Well, I think personally, mm. I've been super impressed by Showtime lately. I know that he's had a bit of trouble with the qualification for Challenger. There's all of that stuff going on, but he's been looking really good in all the online turns I've been seeing him in. Yeah, but Nurcio is like, I mean, he's also been in enough online tournaments, and it's, you know, he does well in almost every single one. So, yeah. I mean, really, it is a, t it's like Showtime does have to prove himself a little bit. I know it's weird to say because he does well <laughs> enough in WCSs, but it's like in the past three months, has his Korean training really paid off? was the the GS over the world result is you know highest moments in the latter half like it could be or he could prove me wrong and defeat Nurchio and then I think he advances his group and then I think he goes in the round of 16 and it's like it's all from there right? come out of the hyperbolic time chamber of Korea just <laughs> super ripped and just destroy everybody yeah, the, over the here. question is was he trunks who got like too ripped right so he's really slow and oh, he has to be yeah, exactly. <laughs> go too far <laughs> That's not a reference I was prepared to make until least, yes. Uh, so what about what about Nurture do we like then? I feel like one of the best things about him is his range has always been good. We've seen a lot of aggressive builds come out of him, a lot of but he he's played some of these crazy long games as well. I feel like the interesting thing about Nurcio is kind of the development from last year versus this year. Because last year you look at Nurcio and it's like, oh, this is the guy that is always kind of staying on that layer tech. He was known for that. He was known for getting the sickest engagements all the time. I almost feel like he kind of well-rounded out his play a bit more because you see him going up to that hive tech a lot more often. You see him playing a lot more along what I would say standard is, not that kind of like Nurcio-esque vibe of ZV, whatever. 
and I feel like just in general, he's like a more normal-ish player these days. I feel like he, I agree, he's, he's more well-rounded. Like, I'll see him try his macro style, and then he'll lose, and I'll be like, well, that's obviously not working, and I'll go right into the all-in, and that's, mm -hmm. the, the adaptability is, is probably why he's been so consistent in those round of eights, and then um, just needs like a little bit more of a push to get into the semifinals. Cool, and we know both of you are gonna be hopefully keeping track of some of the other games that are going on in this tournament. What are some other players that you're excited to see here compete in Montreal as Zombie Grub? Well, I'm going to have to actually be like part of the NA hype train, right? Because John Snow and Semper do actually have a chance to, to continue to advance on. So that's, that is always exciting. But then um, my two favorites, the defeat, Cyril, which is kind of like the big overarching Star Island, of course, uh, are actually Scarlet and Neve. And Scarlet uh, has done, Montreal has kind of been a place for her historically that she's had surprising results. First year Montreal, she was surprising. Second year, she got pretty far. Um, so I feel like there's that, always that question of like, is Scarlet going to do well at all? Sometimes she really doesn't do well, right? But but Montreal is usually a fantastic place for her. Yeah, I mean, her, a lot of her success earlier in this year, you know, in Pyeongchang, really big. And then yeah. WCS has been a, one of those spots where she's been a little bit weak, but we've seen her as one of the players that can draw blood from players like Sarah. Exactly, yeah, Valencia 3-2, right? Or she got 2-3, I guess you should say it that way. She's always so. a, such a spiky player, right? It's, and it's depending on the day, not even a particular match or something, where she'll play really, really well on a particular day or one particular tournament. And I remember the Pyeongchang thing, what was so weird was that it was one week before Leipzig, I think you were just <laughs> talking about. It was Leipzig, Scarlett does, quite frankly, really terrible. And then the week yeah. after she wins Pyeongchang, it's like, I, there's only six days. You were traveling. You didn't get to practice a lot she, more. She's a, she's a very hot, cold player. Yeah. And I think that was one of the big stories this year was, you know, we were just talking about people that could beat Sarah. Nave was had cooled off a lot going into this mm -hmm. year, but performed well in tournaments outside of WCS. However, not able to to make the big leap in here. He still has a ton of points. Still one of our players that we consider secure, but... How do you guys feel about the hype that's been coming up because of the GSL performance? People are starting to think that maybe he can do it just, just because of the last few weeks in Korea. I think he, I mean, I absolutely think that he can. The, the mm -hmm. question is, because his GSL performance was so recent, that's the question. He literally came from Korea that's 12 true. hours after it, 12 hours before, uh, I think like his, even his train, like a little, like, or his, or his bags actually, I think were lost for a little bit or something oh, like really? that. So, Ouch. So, I mean, I think he's got them now, but like the point is like, he is coming off of the jet lag. He's coming off from only practicing PVT, uh, which we do not have a ton of Terrans in the WCS That's circuit. True. You know, all the top eight are usually uh, Zerg. So mm -hmm. um, that is a little bit worrying, but he's certainly proven that he can be the need that won three WCSs last year. Okay, uh, as we get into this series, we're just, the players are just setting up. Um, how about the maps for this series then for PVZ? What do you guys feel about the pool that we have coming in? This is the first big tournament that we really get to see these brought out. Fear Dragon, Well, go ahead. I mean, if, if you take Scarlet's answer, then Protoss <laughs> just has favoritism on every single one of these maps. But if you look at the actual numbers themselves, actually, uh, there's a really great website you, uh, called SC2 Unmasked. Really, really great website. It has the ladder statistics for all the games that people have been playing recently. You can set an MMR range also. So all the games for players set over 6K MMR, it's actually... Zergs have either favoritism or they're even on all these maps. Protoss players have actually been struggling a lot. And I think this is pretty typical whenever a new map pool comes out. I know Radia uh, and I were talking about this where every single time there is a new map pool, Protoss always are like the yeah. last ones to really settle in and figure out how to play the map. So it's not a huge surprise, but I do think it's a bit rougher for Protoss right now. What about new maps can make things a little bit tricky for Protoss then, Zombie Grub? Oh, wow, that's, a, that's actually a really <laughs> that's good question. That's a loaded question. question. <laughs> yeah, I know it is a really loaded question. Oh, but I, I feel like they're so, uh, like, defensively positional, right? So Zerg, yeah. they see, like, a big open area, and they're like, well, I have the idea to get this around. But but Protoss, they're like, well, here works a little bit better when I get to SimCity. Here works a little bit better when I get up in the force fields. Uh, here's where I can actually safely, like, execute my warp prism. Um, there's enough dead space. Like, they just... It's, I think it's a historic thing. I mean, every single time we have a map tournament, it feels like the Protoss are the ones that always struggle. And Terrans, yeah. actually, I feel like the ones that they find the abuse of strat Right? Oh, yeah. And they're like the best for the first week, and then the abusive strat gets like, but, but Protoss doesn't really have an abusive strat. They just need to find that that correct way to even play in general, it feels. So. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff yeah. like walling off, I think, is a, yeah, a big deal. That, that's like those. the first and basic thing, but yeah, yeah. walling off. And it's, yeah. and it's so important. Well, we are ready to introduce the players up on the stage. Smix, ready to get into our second ZBP over here? I am, I am. We had a pretty straightforward 2-0 for our first match. Snoot did that for us, but I'm excited for this one, Nathaniel says these are two former WCS champions, so I'm sure this is bound to be a better match. Please give it up. It is Nurchu and Showtime! There we have our players shaking hands, getting ready to start this one off. Showtime, runner-up. 
at WCS Live Sish, the first player to be smoked down in a championship this year by Serral. And he has been, we said, a little bit cooler for the for remaining of the year, but trying to come back now, the training in Korea. Nurcio, he's got them championships. He's also been around forever. A lot of those were a long time ago. Yeah, last time that Nurcio, I think, won one of those big premier tournaments was WCS Valencia of, I think it was 2016 or something. Yeah. So he's been so consistent, but he hasn't gotten that gold medal for a while. It's been tough for him, Zombie Grub. Well, yeah, but it's, I think, you know, Snoot, one of the reasons he was even saying, like, retirement is coming is that he actually, one of his points was that the play has advanced so much. So, yeah, he's still pretty good, of course, but the play has advanced so much. So it's actually, it feels sometimes like Nurture is actually keeping his head above water. Um, but, you know, I still don't, it's not that I don't believe he can have a spike to take him to gold, but it's, it, it is very difficult with how many good players there are now. These young whippersnappers <laughs> yeah, exactly. are coming up and they're so Star good Rainers. at the game. Gosh. Having to deal with players like Rainer, players like Serral. So, as we're just about ready to get into this match, any final thoughts on the series, Showtime Nerd Show? I know we, we broke it down a lot. Do you, have a, do you have a prediction for you favor in this? Take it. Uh, I'm going to go with Nerchio. I'm actually going to go with Showtime. Perfect. I'm going to okay. say Showtime 2 1. You think we pre plan that before? Are, you, are you just trying to disagree? I know you do that. For I me. am a contrarian. I mean, I've been hanging out with Jeff so much that it, it just comes out. Twitch chat says Showtime's going to win. The well, all, Twitch is always knowing, right, so... The all-knowing, you know. all-seeing. In that case, I'm going to side with Nurchio <laughs> instead. <laughs> there you go, Twitch chat. Fear Dragon hates you. Uh, we'll be getting this one started in just a few moments. Uh, do you, were you talking about a match you guys are looking at over uh, here? Yes, yeah, I know Fear Dragon's going to be excited. Jon Snow, I believe, just 2-1's answer. So. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And just, it, that was the, the hardest one in his group, I believe. So. You guys can high-five if you want. NA player one. It's okay. We do like a nerdy high five where we actually miss and we're like, oh my god, cut to ads. Oh god. No, oh, no. She always says mean things about my NA players when I get excited about them. And I think she doesn't even believe them most of the time. She just does it to annoy me, so I don't want to high five. I am not nearly as mean about you and your NA players. As who? Some, some... The other, the other stop commentators. Fear Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that being said, we'll stop playing Fear Dragon and get into our next match, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be Showtime versus Nurcio. Germany versus Poland here. It is the rank number four versus rank number six place players. Two of the mainstays of the WCS circuit. Uh, they have got a lot of championships between them. Roddy here is with me, ready to commentate this one. I am Pig, and we are excited to jump into this series. Two household names in the European scene, two champions, two guys that have been around for a long time, and two guys that we expect to make it to the global finals at the end of the year. This man is pretty much locked in, hailing from Germany. It is showtime. He's had a big resurgence this year after some struggles last year. He's been slaying it. And uh, one of the most consistent players who's gone a little bit under the radar for some fans, but he has hit a quarterfinals at every single event and he'd love to go further here. Down in the bottom left hand side in the red, the Zerg. He is Nurcio. Yeah, he likes to pride himself on his own consistency and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that because his results are very consistent, but he didn't peak one time this year, Pig. And that actually means yeah. that Nurcio is not a lock yet for the Global Finals. Of course, he made it in 2016, he made it in 2017. We kind of expect him to make it here again. But if he would bomb out in the round of 32, this is actually going to be a very scary weekend for him because there are quite a few people who could still pass Nurcio on that WCS ranking. And this probe here from Showtime already being very annoying, occupying, of course, the mining priority on those mineral patches, forcing Nurcio's workers to be a little bit less efficient, a uh, sign of a very high-level Protoss player <laughs> executing his build order perfectly at home while being as much of a nuisance as possible. If any Barco does that against me on the ladder, I'm always like, uh-oh. We're <laughs> dealing with a professional, you know. <laughs> Us ordinary StarCraft nerds, we don't do that. And if we do do it, we're floating seven on the yeah, minerals. The, the on next, the other. this is 20 <laughs> seconds late back at home. <laughs> exactly, like I tried it once as well, and then I forgot my pilot, and I'm like, you know what, never again. And I'm okay with not being that good. But yeah, it's one of those things, it really doesn't have a massive impact. I honestly feel it's almost mental warfare, don't you think so? It's just one of those things yeah. where I'm bothering you, this is annoying, isn't it? What are you gonna do about it? That's kind of how I see that. And I love little moves like that. You know, there's a lot of strange, just little things players will throw in, in tournament games especially, like a little pylon block just to delay something by a few seconds extra. A pro being nice and annoying, coming back in from an unexpected angle. Maybe the adept diving a little bit deeper than usual. 
But uh, as far as build orders go, it's been all stock standard for now. There was a second adept actually chrono boosted by Showtime because this is such a small map that Zerglings can get over here so quickly. So he's not even using that to pressure. He's just got the single adept. It's spotted the third base. And it's going to shade, of course, uh, towards the main base, just get a little bit of extra vision. And it sees there's only one worker on gas. Lots of drones popping out. No alarm bells ringing. Showtime's going to go home without Adept. He's got a Phoenix on the way to deny the scouting. And he's going to try and just put the blackout on Nurchio's vision before choosing his next tech. Yeah, it's like you said. This is a small map. So for Showtime, obviously nothing weird is happening, but it's easy for us to see. How many games don't we see on a map like this that actually just end with 18 Zerglings and a couple Bailings? So it is important you send your Adept to the other side of the map. It is important that you make that shade that you will never let it complete. You're not looking for drone kills there. You're just making making sure everything is standard. Because if it's not, then you need to make, obviously, defensive measures immediately. Right now, Showtime knows he can just play a regular game because he doesn't have to worry about the crazy all-ins. It's a pretty fast Twilight Council follow-up here. It looks a little bit like a Glaive Adept uh, pressure to follow up on this uh, Phoenix Oracle. And I like that on this map. It's such a short rush distance through the middle. And uh, as you go later on as well, we're going to see a lot of choke points. Until all those rocks get taken down in the middle of this map, it's kind of awkward for both sides to attack the other. So uh, definitely going to be something which favors defensive play on the third base. But then, and obviously, as a response, I really like the road point for Nurcho because you said this is a very small map. As the Oracle, actually, he's going to be able to maybe get a drone kill or two. No, that's kind of sloppy, mm -hmm. actually, by Showtime. Felt there was a little bit of potential there. The big downside of this build, though, Pig, and obviously, if you disagree, please let me know, is that if you end up losing your adapts, what Zerg players often do is that they never stop building roaches and links. They clean up your adapts, they run to the other side of the map, and they either keep you on two bases or straight up destroy you. And yeah. that's actually something that I think Showtime has to be very, very careful about. Interestingly, though, a lot of Zerglings in production, and that's why I love this pressure here. Just shows five Adepts without Glaives, forces a bunch of Zerglings, but it's actually a delayed attack about 30 seconds from now. It's going to be the real damage dealer, and Nurchio does not want Zerglings against that. You want to have Roaches, but he's already invested so much in these Zerglings, so Nurchio, he's got to spot this. I think his Zerglings are seeing the Adept count, and that's going to ring some alarm bells. The Zerg player is going to have to build a lot of Roaches, but he's actually well, supply blocked right now. Yeah. Yeah, he has got four overlords on the way, though. That's fine. I like the Zergling counterattack. You don't really need those links against the Adepts. Great call there. What I, uh, what I would do if I'm Nurcho is I never stop building Roaches at this point. I only build Roaches, I clean up the Adepts, and then I build more Roaches to run to the other side of the map oh. and potentially win the game. Third mineral line is exposed. Those workers trying to pull back here, but the Zergling's actually going to add a little bit of a surround. The Roaches and Queens coming in to deal some damage. Not a lot of work is going down just yet, and Showtime being very conservative with the Shade, he actually goes for the evacuation. It's just going to pull back, wants to keep those alive. You said it before, Roddy, he's afraid of the counterattack on this small map. Yep, if you lose all of your adapts, you know you're incredibly susceptible to that. Now, he does have the first Immortal on the way, but that's pretty much the only thing that he would have had. But Nurture's not doing what I would have liked to see him do. Actually, one Immortal was already out. We're looking at Immortal number two that's on the way. Nurture's just got a drone up. I think Nurture handled that all right. He really didn't lose a lot of drones. Losing links, eh, it is what it is. You're kind of supposed to lose at least something against all those adepts. Yeah, and he's got a good worker count up. 65 versus just the 47 is Showtime. Mm -hmm. uh, even though he killed a few Zerglings, I don't think it was the damage Showtime was looking for. Potentially, uh, you know, from our point of view, we saw there weren't a lot of roaches on the map just yet. Might have been able to find oh. a bit more. A bit of a slow pull there from Nurcio, but wow. turns out it was perfectly <laughs> timed. <laughs> I'm with you, Pig. I really felt that was a slow reaction. I and he was going to get like four Four traps. or five yeah. at least. <laughs> It's like, ah, oh, this is our moment, Pig. We can criticize Nurture. No, actually, it was perfect. He squeezed in some extra minerals before that pool. And uh, the third base getting saturated. A lot of sentries there. Adepts being warped in. This is a very scary assault. Showtime only at 50 workers. Ravage is being morphed in reactively, but there's not a lot of them out just yet. Zerglings aren't going to be very useful versus this army. Nurcio needs to get that Roach Ravage account up higher. Yep, worry about the sentries here as well. Nurcio obviously knows that force fields are very, very intimidating in this phase in the game. He's getting more Ravages. That's what he needs, but his hatchery is really taking a beating and is actually going to go down very quickly.
Yeah, this is such a good surprise attack. We keep talking about the rush distance here on Blue Shift, and that is exactly what's working in his favor. Whoa. Showtime gonna dive on top of the Roaches and Ravages. A very ballsy uh. maneuver, and it may have been an overextension. The counters swing in from the Roaches and Zerglings, cleaning One up reserve. most of those steps. Oh, the Prism just barely survives there. And that extra warp in of Adepts adding a lot of buffer. The Immortals are still alive. Yeah, that could have gone a lot worse, but I still don't like this for Showtime because he's not going to end the game here. And eventually these units are going to get surrounded. The Adepts have cleaned up in the main base. It's all about getting those Immortals right now for Nurture, and he will get them. Uh, Rico is going to save the day. Obviously Showtime knew yeah. he was going to end up losing them. I don't know how I feel about this game right now, Pick. Obviously, picking up the hatchery is nice. He got a couple drones, it's nice. But the army of Showtime is very small. The sentries, they don't offer much in this phase in the game anymore because they've ran out of energy. I'm a little bit worried for Showtime, but he's still in this one. Charge is not done just yet. There were not probes building behind this. Showtime is now trying to build up the work account, uh, but his natural is very, very exposed. It's only a few roaches and ravages, though. Nurture is not ready to commit just yet. A few roaches will get punished for that uh, slight overextension. Uh, that the Oracle, Oracle has Ooh. a lot of energy, actually. That Oracle has been chilling, so it should be able to pick up at least one more Ravager, but I think it can take one more on top of this. Oracles are excellent against Ravagers. Yeah, he squeezes in a round of production, goes back to focus it, but the Transfuse comes in for the save. Nurtio's third base being rebuilt. He transitioned workers over to his fourth hatchery. Now there is a Prism in position, and mm. there are a lot of choke points on this map, so even though those force fields weren't really that powerful right after the attack. The sentries are now regaining energy. They're going to be able to split the army up. With only two Ravages out to break those, they can add a lot of value over the long game. But with Hydras, especially, of course, with Groove Spines finishing up, I think sentries are always a little less intimidating, right? Hydras are pretty good. They have much bigger range than Roaches do, much bigger range than Ravages as well. So a couple of Force Fields are not that devastating anymore because Hydras can also fire from the other side of the Force Fields. It's an awkward moment what? for Nurtio with his tech. It looks like a sneaky arc on Charizard warping into the main Nurtio's base. Nurtio wants to swap into Ravager Baneling, but Baneling speed is miles away. His plus one melee is going to be ready soon, but already the threatening attack at the front. And at the same time, the Archons and Zealots dive into the main base. Showtime, so aggressive, so decisive. He's going to try and, yeah, just landing the force fields. Clicks on the hatchery. He's going to try and recall out, but uh... Nurtio's on top of him. I don't know if he can recall. That's probably still on cooldown. That means that these Immortals are going to go down very quickly. And yes, he got the hatchery and 11 drones, but that was a very expensive army to lose. Of course, Showtime is doing a phenomenal job in the main base. He should be able to get the spawning pool, maybe the hatchery, oh. but Nurture cannot even be bothered. Nurture's counterattacking on the other side of the map. Yeah, Showtime going to pull back to two bases. He's killed the fourth, and he's going to kill the main hatchery now he as recalls. well. Recalls, but he recalls to his third hatchery. That's exposed. That's not where you want your army to be right now. Nope, and only oh. one Argon as well. The Zealots, however, are going to get on top of these Ravages. What a game we've got over here, Pig. There is action all over the place. That Bailing runs into the Immortal. Showtime's army is very small, but Showtime's economy can potentially become a lot better, but this game is just hectic right this now. This is absolute madness. Showtime is playing a down and dirty, scrappy game against Nurtio, but Nurtio's units are finally consolidating themselves on this side of the map. All those units that had to pull back to defend the main base, they're Lost here the now. The third base is exposed. Remember, there's no splash damage for Showtime. He's trying to retake an exit in the north side of the map, but I don't know how he's going to fight this army with just Archons and Immortals. He doesn't have the army anymore. He lost too many expensive units. Losing those four Immortals was simply a little too much. Of course, an Immortal and an Archon near Battery Shields is nice, but Nurture can just ignore the natural. He can go for that exposed fort base. There is a lot of probes as well on the north side of that Nexus, which would be the jackpot for Nurture. Nurture knows those probes are there, and he's kind of luring Showtime into a very bad fight Two here. sentries, two Archons, and an Immortal. This is not a large army for Protoss. Showtime is in trouble. The Nexus goes down. Down. He's going to try and Queen. pull those probes back, but there is just too much for Nurtio. Nurtio massacring those probes as they try to evacuate, even landing a corrosive pile on some. And as these Hydras reinforce in, Showtime forced to tap out. Wow. Nurtio takes the 1-0 lead after a very exciting game on Blue Shift, and game where Showtime really hit a lot of weird, almost anti-timings, right? Or mm. just surprise attacks, so to speak. Really going for a strategy that suits well on a shorter map like Blue Shift. 
But I think Nurture will prioritize things very well, especially in the chaotic moments of that game. A couple of times he really picked up the Immortals when it mattered the most, and he kept reducing that army size. So even if Showtime created an economic advantage for himself once or twice, yeah. I felt, always felt that Nurture's army was a lot more scary than Showtime's army. You know, it goes back to when he was doing that first push with the sentries. He sniped the third hatchery, and I think we were that both expecting shit. probes to, to start up in the production tab, a forge to go down, Psystorm to start up, but he didn't even start charge. He just tried to kill right there. The Adept Shade with the Immortals and sentries so far behind the Adepts. That's not how you fight with that army, and I think it must have been either a judgment error, under pressure, maybe he just thought he'd cancelled it, but it was a disastrous moment there for Showtime where he got over-eager, the Ravages mm -hmm. were even landing Biles yeah. on the Adepts, which is never supposed to happen. No, and it wasn't one or two Adepts, no, it was in the middle of a group of Adepts. I mean, we both looked at each other, we're like, whoa, <laughs> didn't see that shit coming, all right, let's see how it plays out. It was a very fun game, and yeah. I absolutely don't hate the way that Showtime played. I think just a couple a couple of times he lost a few too many key units. Like losing sentries, adapts, it's all fine, it's all good as long as you get something in return. But if you lose four immortals, that's really hard to reproduce yeah. because you're only working with one robotics facility, you're only building those one at a time. Gateway units, you can warp in six, seven, it's all good, you can replace those. But four immortals is simply too much to ever lose to say like, yeah, I did a little bit of economic damage and I got a hatchery. No, you need way more when you lose that amount of immortals. Yeah, Showtime flying off the handle with the aggression in that game. Really just kicked it up a notch and didn't want to, uh, you know, didn't want to take it easy at all. You could see that the moment he was warping in High Templar in the main of Nurture yeah. to turn into Archon. How often do you see that? It's it's madness. And I mean, that that is what led to the overextension. I, I love the two-pronged assault, but, but I thought that over committing was... with the main army was the mistake there on that yeah. south side. A hundred percent. I mean, if he just kind of said, okay, my force fields are out, let's withdraw. Nurture can't chase him, but he let his army get surrounded and uh, wasn't quite enough. The beauty for us is obviously that we can analyze things till the dawn of days, but I think if you go back to that pro short attack, he would have achieved the same with one Archon and four Zealots in the main as he did with three Archons and all those Zealots in the main, mm. right? So it's safe to say that if he would have reinforced his main army a little bit more, there's a good chance that all goes a lot better for him, but obviously hindsight makes it a lot easier pick. Hindsight indeed is 2020, and I'm sure it is for this man up here as well in the top right-hand side of the map, the blue Protoss player. He is Showtime! Down 0-1 against this man who desperately needs the WCS points to secure his ticket to the Global Finals at the end of the year. Mr. Consistency himself, it's Nurture. Very clean Game 1 victory there for Nurture in the face of a very crazy wild series of attacks. To, to kind of close it out the way he did, I would say is very impressive. And it's always a confidence booster early on to get that momentum, shut down your opponent's uh, aggressive opportunities. Always works out very nicely. The probe gonna come in again. Just see a very standard opening for both sides. And uh, it is lost and found. So who do you like this map for a little bit better? The Zerg or the Protoss? I think this is an all right Protoss map. There's a lot of choke points. I think going up to three bases is very easy. The fort, that's where things become a little bit more complicated. But I think if your units are in the right position and you keep track of that Zerg army, it's really not a bad Protoss map. It's not a map that Protoss players can truly complain about. Now, I do want to mention real quick, guys, I know day one is hard to follow when we have all these groups and all these games being played at the same time. This is Group B of the second group phase. No, it's not Group B, excuse me, it's Group C. And Showtime and Nurture are the overwhelming favorites in this group. This group is completed by Gogo, Joey, and Nice. Now, obviously, both those guys are good. They're from the Southeast Asian region. However, Showtime and Nurture should normally make it out of this group. But that doesn't mean that this series is not important. Of course, if you win your group, you have better seating going into the round of 32, where things start getting very interesting. So for both Showtime and Nurture, obviously, first priority is advancing. But winning is also pretty damn important. Yeah, absolutely. The seeding can add up a lot. Sometimes you do get a much smoother run if the seeding goes well. And I think both of these players definitely are very, very eager to secure that spot at BlizzCon. And not only that, they both would love to, to knock that chip off their shoulder after both being eliminated by Haas in WCS Valencia <laughs> in some of the most wild series. Uh, you know, it was a pleasure to watch Haas take down these two Titans. And, you know, we had a, a mixture of frustration, sometimes laughter on their faces after the, the wildness games. We had cannon rushes, we had these wild, crazy builds. But 
both players were expecting to go further at that yep. tournament, and uh, they were a little bit frustrated going out when they did. So now already facing off against another top tier competitor, someone who's so high in the rankings, if you can take them down, it is a fantastic way to start off your tournament run. A big confidence booster before you've even hit that final group stage. Yep, uh, opening so far very standard, I think, for Showtime. He scouted with the Adept, took a little bit of damage, but he didn't end up losing it, and that's the most important thing. He's gonna take both gases, that's right? That's a very in. fast gas, actually. Do you think it's just an Archon drop, or...? Uh... With 12 probes, I don't think it's that yeah. crazy, right? He's got 12 probes already on the natural, so by the time they're finished up, he has a few more. And even if he saturates both of them, he still has eight workers, eight, nine, so it's not that bad. Fair enough. Uh, definitely it's expensive to go into that Archon drop, and you want to get it out as quickly as possible, right? When you've already got a Phoenix and an Oracle out, it's a lot of gas. If you hit even 20, 30 seconds later, sometimes it's just very easy for the Zerg yep. to slap the Archon drop away. So timing is everything in a game of StarCraft. And here we go once again, Phoenix Oracle. I love the turnaround from Showtime. A lot of players just go on default mode. They just pick up, lose a lot of hit points, don't really get any worker kills. Uh, Does go a bit deep there. That Oracle getting heavily bruised. Yep, and not a single drone kill yet. Sometimes as a Protoss, you want to get a little bit fortunate there as well. There's often drones that are being transferred between bases, right? Those rally points, they bounce all over the place. So that's kind of what you're hoping for. Maybe you can pick off two or even three drones. That would be awesome. But yeah, if everything is well protected by the Queens, it's unlikely you really get a lot of damage done there going to be that third base uh, being taken in the near future. Showtime, of course, just scouting around with his Phoenix. Wants to double check there's nothing spicy coming his way. It's going to see the Roach Warren, the extra gases starting to go down, and it's a stock standard setup for Nurtio. Nurtio is a player who loves his patterns. He loves his solid reactive play, and he's one of the best at it. His Zergling spots the third going down. He's got another Zergling that sees the Warp Prism. Roach production starts up well ahead of time. He's also got those Zerglings, so Something you can do is sometimes try to kill the High Templar when they're morphing in, but that's yeah. why the Oracle and the Phoenix are on escort duty there, to make sure that doesn't happen. Yep, those are the bodyguards for these High Templars being warped in. I thought Nurture made his first roaches perhaps a tiny bit early. He really didn't need them yet, and then he went back into droning, and now he goes back into roaches again. So it's not the absolute cleanest way to get where he currently is. Also not a big deal, it's not that he has a terrible economy, but that could have been a tiny bit cleaner. Yeah, Nurture, he is a player who likes to sometimes almost overreact to incoming pressure, mm -hmm. really slap it down, and then have the freedom to take control of the map. Uh, this is already not finding the damage it would like. Oh, my lord. <laughs> That's cute. Someone was posting on Reddit or, or somewhere talking about why players don't do this enough. Well, there we go. Showtime, always someone who says, you know what, I don't have an Observer for a long time. I'm just going to drop that arc and use the splash damage to take down my opponent's stuff. And it is going to be the Hydra transition from Nurture as well. Yep, Queens, obviously, you have to be very, very careful about those Queens with your War Prism. I feel like they're getting a little close to each other. War Prisms are not that tanky, and with four or five Queens, one misclick would become very expensive. Now, there is an Observer over here on the south side, so Showtime can continue. Oh, oh that's a big misclick. misclick. That yeah. is a big misclick. He hasn't wow. realized as well. Oh no, Showtime's War Prism just abandoning that Archon goes down for nothing. And that's a big mistake, losing such an expensive unit for free this early on. Really didn't get anything out of it either, didn't even get a single Roach. There is Double Immortal being produced on the other side of the map with Storm on the way as well. Well, it seems like Nurture's heading into a good old Hydra Link Baneling composition. Of course, he's got these Roaches, but I'm not expecting him to really make a lot of Roaches after this. If he's also trying to get melee upgrades, if he's also trying to get those Banelings out there, it feels like Nurture's made a lot of Roaches, though, too. Yeah, it's then head into Hydra Link Bane. It feels a little bit strange to me, Pick. Definitely. You want to find a way to kind of get rid of those Roaches in an efficient fight, and that's the tough part, right? The Roaches don't really mesh as well with the Hydra Baneling Assaults. No. They don't find their place, but if Showtime kind of pushes out, they're a great defensive unit. They're also very good for counterattacks if you can catch the Protoss out of position. The thing is, this is lost and found, and there's a pattern on this map. Uh, uh, Oh, Showtime a little sloppy this game. Maybe that first game yeah. did throw him off a little bit. Maybe he felt like he should have taken it. Maybe he felt there was a lot more potential. But this game, he's definitely not looking on point. I mean, these are things that happen, of course, to all of us as Stark 2 players, but we're expecting a little more out of Showtime. He's been in Korea for two months. We're really expecting a strong Showtime. That Showtime, if he wants to go very deep here, if he wants to potentially bring the fight to Serral, 
You can't fly oracles into Hydras. You can't just forget Archons. That simply doesn't work. That gives up so much vision on the map. The Revelation, its ability to see where the Zerg is striking <laughs> you from is huge. But he snuck this Observer into the main base and it sees the Hive start up. He knows the exact timing of that and the amount of drones on the fourth base. So that is prime information for Showtime to keep tabs on what Nurtio's next steps are. And once it's set up there, it's very rare for a Zerg to make an Overseer and run past that location. So I think Showtime has a very good setup for the information. Is it just going to be Vipers at first? Because he doesn't have a Spire pick, so it's not like he's rushing into Brute Lords. I think Showtime is kind of reading this as he's rushing into yeah. Brute Lords, but that's not the case. Snoot did the exact same thing before, actually, and he also just made Adrenal Glands and just did a standard Hydra Bane Assault. Adrenal wasn't even finished. <laughs> and you know what? The Protoss was dumping money, in that case, Harstam, into yeah. Fleet Beacon, into extra Stargates. The same thing's happening here. As Showtime, all you need right now is cannons, shield batteries, Archons, and more Storm, because there is going to be a huge huge Hydra Bane Assault, and I'm not sure if he's ready. No, and this is what I want to mention as well, is how you said before, it's all about vision, and that Oracle would have been incredibly useful at this point. So you can tag that army, and you know where the majority of the forces are, as Bailings are crashing in on the south oh, side, getting wow. excellent connections with the Zealots, with the Shield Battery, and now the probes are in a lot of trouble. Oh my lord, the probes getting massacred. Actually, an amazing split from Showtime for now, but the Nexus oh. is under siege. He's trying to defend the natural at the same time. Time, but it's just a straight up Hydra Bane assault. Showtime caught here, not with enough ground army oh. down. His High Templar desperately side storming to try to hang on, but oh. there's no meat in left in front of the High Templar left. Wow. They're going down. The juicy underbelly of the Protoss army falls apart. And even though Nurtio is repelled, he gets a base, he gets 11 probes, he <laughs> takes out almost every single tech unit as well. He got more than he could have dreamed of there, I think. Obviously, you hope it goes well, but it went ultra well for Nurtio. GG, our Polish Zerg, will take the series, and with that, will take the victory in Group C. So he's got to advance into the round of 32, secures himself at least some WCS points, which once again is very important for this young man. But I'm sure, Big, we both know this one. He wants more than just a couple points. He wants to have another deep run and a big WCS event. Yeah, both of these players, true competitors, always playing their hearts out. And it's interesting to see this meta shift we've witnessed in a couple of first series today. A lot of respect for the Hive Tech plays, and a lot of Zergs kind of writhing around, doing these very tricky tech uh, kind of fakes. And it is worked out very, very well there. Nurtio is the man we're going to be hearing from about how he feels about this victory. Take it away, Sue. Thank you very much, guys. Congratulations, uh, Nurcio. You're moving on in first place in your group. Of course, you've always been such an amazingly consistent player. So how do you feel about your performance overall thus far? Well, uh, Showtime is the first really good player that I played so far. So I can't really say anything. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I won versus Showtime because he was in Korea for the past two months. So I wasn't really sure how good he is really going to be. Uh, I'm also not sure if he actually played 100% in our match, but I'm glad I could take this one. And I saw, I mean, Showtime is just a player you've played so many times, especially over the past three years. I saw the last time you played him this year was at WESG, it was 3-2, so now that it's been several months and you knew he was in Korea, did that affect how you prepared for this match at all, or did you just focus on your own game? Well, lately I've been pretty confident with my ZVP, so I knew what I wanted to do in the match, and uh, I kind of actually uh, foresee, let's say, what he's going to play. So I feel, feel like the, the second game especially w was really clean by me. And well, I'm sure Showtime can come back into this tournament really strong anyway. Well, now let's talk about you overall, especially with WCS rankings. You're currently ranked number six. You've had really consistent year, top eight, every, every single WCS stop thus far. But obviously, since being ranked six, I'm sure you want to really secure that spot to BlizzCon. So what are your thoughts about this event overall? Well, I want to go at least to top eight, I think, once again. Uh, I think that would pro almost secure me the spot. Although we'll see how it goes in the next group stages because it's going to be really tough. But I hope I can stay consistent. Sounds great. Congratulations again on advancing in first place. Let's head back to Nathanius. Congratulations indeed to Nurcio, cleaning it up here in our second series of the day and just overwhelming macro dominating Fear Dragon. 
really, really just solid play. Zombie Grab was right. It turns out the contrarian in me was wrong. And Nurchio yeah. doing a great job. Twitch chat was wrong. Twitch, Twitch chat was there. also wrong. So you know what? Yeah. yeah. I sided with the GMs and look where it got me. <laughs> you know what? It's okay. Just the man of the people for your dragon. Yeah, man of the people. You, uh, you know, Nurchio brings up the interesting point, though. He, he talks about it. I wasn't sure how well Showtime would play because of the practice in Korea. Yeah. Was there something that really stood out to us as, like, clearly this was just a big mistake that he made against Nurchio or Nurchio was doing something really well that was, like, we should still have that hope in Showtime? Or does this take a lot of the wind out of his sails? I, I actually... I caught like 90% of it, but it was actually a little bit worrying, you know? Like, I, I agree with Nurture that I think he's going to advance on. I think he'll still do well enough. But when he was at his peak in Korea, playing in those Korean tournaments, it was like everything was perfect. It was what you would expect from someone who's supposedly coming out of that hyperbolic time chamber, right? But this game wasn't. Like, he made some pretty critical mistakes, ones that are very important to the game. Like, we all know the, the attack that he moved in and the roaches, but even leaving that Archon behind. The Archon! He that, left him huge. all on his own in the depths of space. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's it's actually a little bit concerning. I don't know, maybe he's, like, shaking off the rust of being back in not Korea, but not exactly mm. Europe either. Um, I don't know, but I, at least I, I'm almost sure he'll have time to shake it off because he still will advance, Yeah, I think. Okay. I think so. Okay. Well, uh, any other thoughts on the series? I, I think that it's fair to say that both these guys should probably be able to make it out of their group. They've they've yes. done yeah. reasonably well enough. Um, yeah. I think we're going to be taking a look at the group soon, hopefully, as yeah. well. I also actually am in a game that is just absolutely nutty. I mean, to put this in perspective, we see right now, that's a 23-minute mark. This is about the time that these mineral patches have finally gotten mined. Harstam has finally, at the 23-minute mark, been able to secure his fourth base. That's like nice. how absurd this game has been. <laughs> Bly had, I think, at one point, eight bases on the map, and now he's back down to four. He had mined out the gold and everything. It's just been an insane game between these two so far. I Harstum. love carriers. Uh, carriers are pretty awesome. So Harstam was on three bases, and his fourth base just got canceled. And then I think he tried to retake it again, and I, I'm not sure if I missed saw it. I think his own immortal killed his fourth base. <laughs> So after that, he just kind of gave up on the fourth base, went up to carriers, tried to go for an attack, shut down four of Bly's bases while Bly was just trying to remake his army and remake his army off of an amazing economy. But Harson was doing a great job with his multi-prong harassment and everything. It's just been absurd. And I think that we might be seeing the conclusion of this game soon. Okay. It seems like a very funky game, yeah. but uh, you know, it's it's Bly. Yeah, yeah. It's Bly. Yeah. Unfortunately, if you, if you lose it, he leaves out of that group. This group that I'm watching, Jon Snow was able to take out Zanster. We said that before uh, the actual match. Now he's facing Crow because Crow actually took out Cloudy, um, which was was pretty weird. Uh, there's actually not much happening right now. It's the first game of the series. Uh, looks like Crow is actually even in the lead as the army. Army form's pretty darn big, but. Anyways, they just, you know, this game, the series go either, they, like, you just didn't expect these two to be in the winner's match. Okay. I mean, I expected I, Jon you, Snow, but... But even you I were like, a, Crow beating Cloudy. Yeah, that after, was very surprising. Who did Cloudy beat in group stage one? Uh, someone someone pretty good, actually. I, I wish mm, I had looked that up beforehand. Yeah. It was, it's, you know, Cloudy, maybe people don't know him that well, sure, but um, he did particularly well in group stage one, and then to be beaten by someone we don't really know a lot about, Crow. I mean, it's, it seems to be a little bit of the, the weird group. That's the weird game, it's the weird group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every series with Bly is usually just weird. <laughs> uh, we're gonna catch up to speed on the rest of the groups that we've been able to follow, any results that have come in. You guys can just stop me, let me know if anything surprising comes up. We haven't seen any uh, further developments here just yet. That lower match you guys were talking about is being played. Jon Snow and Crow, you guys talk about that being played that one's going on right now um i just want to keep moving yeah all right so showtime and dirt you know we just did got to see that of course that was their yep. winner match that just went through and that means i think based on that result the win loser will have to play nice oh right? really happy that mana was able to pull things back because i know he was looking a little bit rockier earlier on he had been down a game at the the very beginning versus future but it looks like he was able to pull it back and go up 2-0 in this series poor dolan mm. eliminated Cut down. <laughs> Danger Dolan, not going to be making it any further. That's Semper and Shadon well, so, yeah. opening well. I mean, yeah. Disc and Riser, two, two NA players that just, <laughs> if they're going to be good, it's going to take them a little while longer. They would be on the up and up. I, I, Riser always has a special place in my heart because he's like one of the true believers of the Blink DTs, but I also know that he's, he's going to have a hard time in that. I game. do not enjoy playing against Riser. <laughs> not, I do not. Ooh. Uh, I mean, this is actually another really tough group. Um, Drogo, I guess, is the only match that's been played so far. 
Uh, that's not too surprising. Time, there has not been a lot of strong presence from the Chinese uh, players of this Recently, year, yeah. I believe, like in the entirety of the year. Yep. So it would be, I mean, Time's always the one that has the most eyes on him. So it'd be kind of cool to see him advance uh, pretty far this tournament. Yeah, yeah, I think one big thing in this group especially is that Stefano was able to win a ZVZ versus Cham. He, oh, okay. That's, that's, okay. that's amazing, actually. But, Stefano yeah. has so much trouble with ZVZ. So he must be feeling on cloud nine right now. Yeah, that's got to be an awesome feeling. Meanwhile, Namshar in Denver leading mm. this group H. TLO and Cuddle Bear are going to have to face off in a fight <laughs> for their lives. Yeah, TLO looking good today, though. Was able yeah. to eliminate Seoul today. And uh, Denver and Namshar are, like, I think my two picks right now for this tournament to just be like the biggest up and coming players in terms of how far they've come up in the past month or two. Yeah, Tilo might be doing well, but it was like, he usually beats Seoul. It's not like he certainly made it sound that way. So offline tournaments. So it's a different beast to face it, as you're saying, yeah. two up and coming Zerg players. Well, we were talking about interesting matches and someone finally not having to play Zerg versus Zerg. Ladies and gentlemen, our next series is going to be Stefano versus Time, a TVZ as we move forward here in group stage two. This is the World Championship Series. We'll be right back after this short break with our next match.